I'd watch yourself, my friend. I don't know if our pale rogue has anything good in his heart, or even a scrap of it left for you. Uh, excuse me? That's just mean. We're all adults here. Your heart's as cold as ice, Astarian. I'm just making sure no one slips and gets hurt. Karlak, a hypothetical question for you. If someone, not me, of course, detected a hint of romantic interest in them from another unnamed individual, um, what might that someone do about it? Whoever it is, just talk to them, Gail, and leave out the hypotheticals. Talking, right. I'm good at that. You have a love-struck look about you, Karlak. Just do not let it distract you from the task ahead. But what if I really enjoy being distracted from the task ahead? <sighs> Where is the barbarian rage? I have been learning so many colorful phrases from you. I was hoping to inspire a few more. Mom, you've been inspiring me since I was yay high. I heard a curious sound in the night. What would you know about that, Shadowheart? I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. Perhaps a cat pounced on its prey. Lady Shah permits me to plead ignorance. I ask not of Lady Shah, but of you and your paramour. So, Will, you have your mind set on marriage. Why not? If this adventure has taught me anything, it's that life is fragile, and we should seize joy when we can. You think I'm being rash? Not at all. The world does not wait around for us. So take your moment while you may. Damn what anyone else thinks. So long as you serve a proper meal at the wedding. None of this finger-picking nonsense, yes? I wouldn't have predicted the night you shared with our friend, Lazel. You didn't consider it beneath you. They were beneath me at times, but also above me, and standing at certain points. <laughs> That's enough. I get the picture. Gods, do I get the picture. I hear things got wild between you two. I hope no one was too badly mauled. <laughs> We're all in one piece. Perhaps you'll join us next time. <laughs> it's bad enough having one person with fangs trying to keep control of themselves. Two of us could be... dangerous. Our leader is a fool for love, Minthara. I'd never be compelled to conduct such a poorly planned jailbreak. They did not do it for love. They did it for my prowess in combat, as well as coitus. I excel in both. As do I. Sometimes the acts are not dissimilar. So, Gail, how is your sad, hopeless pining going? <laughs> I'm hardly pining. But a year or more since Mistra cast me aside. <laughs> oh, my dear wizard, I wasn't talking about Mistra. I used to believe the beauty of first love was unable to be surpassed. But Gail, you are so much more tolerable now you found your second. I'll take that comment with the sincerity and goodwill I assume it was intended. Lazel, you're actually glowing. It is the sheen of the soldier's sweat on my brow. The soldier's sweat? Or the lover's? Kincha, speak on it no further. I heard you learned how to swim, Shadowheart. Well done. You know, if you and your love ever wish to enjoy the waters with me, I could attempt a kelpie, or even a porpoise. Depends. Are you buoyant? I may need a life preserver if I get in over my head. Have you noticed any attachments of the more... Uh, romantic variety flourishing in our camp, Will? I think I'm not the right person to be asking. I can recognize a troll silhouette on a far horizon, but I wouldn't know a flirtation if you whacked me alongside the head with it. A few pointers, Lizelle. I heard you and your lover locked in combat, but the test you set was not rigorous enough. Next time, tie them to the ground and do not release them until you are both satisfied. Hmm, you have given me ideas. Very quick to say forever to your newly betrothed, weren't you, Blade? Forever could be tomorrow.
better to promise to do your utmost, as long as you have the moments left to share. Scant few times I've seen youthful partnerships end well, but if anyone was formed to thrive in one, I think it may be you. I really hope you're being careful with our friend, Minthara. I wouldn't want you to break each other. If I break them, it will be in the pursuit of pleasure, and they will die smiling. I see you waste no time pursuing your quarry, Astarian. <laughs> I rather thought I was a little slow this time. Usually they're begging me to drain them on the first night. Tell me, do you always woo your lovers with such patient attention? As the vampire ascendant, I can grant my lover immortality and bind them to me forever. Hmm. I trust you speak of the bonds of love, not the shackles of servitude. Am I to understand that you are in love now, Karlak? I sure am. If there's hope for me, there's hope for anyone. You know, Astarian, I'm not sure I can trust you anymore. You're different. A bit scary, to be honest. I have one person who trusts me completely. That's enough for me. Treat them right, or you'll have me to answer to. I can whittle up a good steak in no time, if the mood takes me. I'm a tad surprised you change into more comfortable garb at Camp Lazel. You strike me as a sleeps-in-her-armour type. It would cause too much noise during my nighttime exertions. I do not wish to alert foes of our location. Nighttime exertions? Oh. I see. Well, considerate of you, I suppose. Uh, marriage, Will? I thought you'd have learned not to get trapped by devious contracts. I was planning to invite you to the ceremony, but I'm having second thoughts. Oh, I'd love to come, as long as I can sit with someone fun. Miss Aura, perhaps. I'm surprised you're permitted to choose a partner outside of your own people. We are to use and misuse each civilization in the stars in every way we know. I do not conquer by blade alone, Gale. I can't imagine Mother Gith would approve. Doesn't she prefer us lesser species enslaved or eviscerated? Minsk has felt Boo's heart is fluttering faster than usual. For our friend, the blade is betrothed. Ah, my thanks. Perhaps we might even marry, if fate wills it. If you cannot find a bear to be the bearer of your ring, Boo would like you to know that he is available. You've been smiling like a fool of late, wizard. Explain yourself. I found love. Surely even you wouldn't begrudge me some happiness. All I will say on the matter is that you were wise to lower your standards from the godly to the ghastly. I am glad it is your non-vampiric charms our friend has fallen for, Astarian. It is, isn't it? Of course. <laughs> is it so unbelievable that they would simply like me? If you insist on prying, <clears throat> perhaps you'd care to join us and see how much we enjoy one another. Why? Do you require some instruction on how the deed is done? <laughs> I'm sure even I could learn some new tricks from an old veteran such as yourself. Tell me, Lazo. Is it common for Githyanki to fall in love? Love. Is that this feeling in me, then? This passion to peel every layer of one's heart, to see what light and shadows lurk there? I doubt I am the first Githyanki to... to feel this way. But few would ever declare it. Githyanki have playmates, thrill partners, but I've never heard anyone profess love, nor read of it in our slates. I was concerned that your pursuit of a cure might cloud your final days. I am glad I was wrong. Me too. Even with so much at stake, in this little heart of mine, I've never been happier. Nature affords us few greater powers of healing than what love can provide, Karlak. Even if you and our friend ended up having werewolf cubs, they'd be so adorable. <clears throat> I've shown no signs of lycanthropy, thank you very much. 
But should that change, I'll take it you're volunteering to be childminder. <laughs> Buy me some protective gloves and I'm all for it. Astarian, I was wrong about you. Truly wrong about you. Oh, let me guess. You thought I'd suck blood, but actually I just suck. <laughs> was that your witty jab? No, I mean it. There's little between us we share, but you've fallen in love and stood by your lover. That is something this dreamer's heart can appreciate. Gail, I've heard you talking in your sleep. Your mate needs better rest for our journey. And deprive them of the pleasure of hearing my nocturnal postulations? I'd never be so cruel. The mind absorbs much while we believe ourselves dormant. To lie beside Gale of Waterdeep is positively educational. Any doubts about falling for a foam in Thara? Or does that just add spice to things? I do not fall for my foes. I vanquish them. I cannot love who I do not trust, with either my heart or my body. I am fortunate to have found someone worthy. If you're feeling faint after your bout with Cazador, Astarian, I don't mind donating some blood. <laughs> When you're still full of that netherese bile, I'll pass, thank you. Besides, I have someone else to nibble on, and they are delicious. I'm glad to know you have a softer side, Minthara. I was beginning to think you rather... heartless. Loving another is not soft, wizard. It is one of the hardest things a person can do. So you admit you found love. Oh, how delightful. I'm happy for you both. So, the more you cool down, the more your love life heats up. Seems that way, but I'm a bit out of practice, to be honest. I'm sure it'll all come back to you. You'll be as depraved as the rest of us in no time. Someone of your social stature, Will, are they typically allowed to pursue their heart's whims as they like? I don't have to ask for permission, if that's what you mean. Really? I'm surprised. I thought dowries, alliances, and old blue blood feuds might have to be balanced against your desires. I'm my own man, Shadowheart, in this sense at least. The two of you are the unholiest union I can bloody imagine. <laughs> it's funny. I don't recall asking your opinion, Will. You had the most precious thing, someone who would do everything for you, and you damn well took everything. Degenerate doesn't half cut it. So, Lazel, things seem to be getting serious with you two. Do you have pet names for each other yet? Pet names? As if we were domesticated animals. Gods, you have so much to learn. Repeat after me. Honey Muffin. Sweetie Pie, Sugar Plum. Honey Muffin, Sweetie Pie. Astarian, do you see all your lovers as food? To give oneself wholly, and to have a lover totally in your thrall? <laughs> a harmless game, until it becomes real. I worry for the two of you, Astarian. Uh, must you take everything so seriously? We're both happy with our arrangement, and that's all that matters. For your sake, I hope some of it is just a fantasy, deep in your heart. Would you ever consider sharing the gift of immortality with me, Astarian? <laughs> I think not. That is for me and my darling to share. If they have prevented your eyes and fangs from wandering to other necks, it must be a special bond indeed. Sorry if this is rude, but can vampires fall in love? <laughs> what a preposterous question. Vampires can do anything you can do and a damn sight better. <laughs> Rich of you to talk about someone else's heart, Carlac. Good to know love is on the table, though. It is. Though if the table is laden with good wine and meat, love is often left to rot with the salad leaves. But I must admit, my chest has been feeling a touch lighter recently. So our vamp isn't so heartless after all. <sighs> all right. 
There are a few limited exceptions. <laughs> it suits you beautifully. Yes, most things do. Used to your new look yet, Will? I, for one, think you look smashing. You know, I think I am. It certainly didn't put off my, uh, dance partner. Ah, dance. The true language of love. Do vampires actually drink blood out of goblets like in the storybooks? Doesn't seem very fresh. Straight from the neck is preferred, but goblets are used in mortal company. They save on awkwardness. We could share a drink some night, if you're curious. A nice red wine in your goblet, of course. <laughs> very kind of you, but I'm saving my best bottle for someone already. Seeing you happy is pretty wonderful, Will. Two of my real friends finding real happiness together. Beautiful. Thank you, Karlak. If you get married, I'm your celebrant. Got it? As if I could ever refuse you. Astarian, I note you and your lover struggle to keep your hands off one another. We're having fun. I would say try it, it won't kill you. But in your case, I'm not sure. Are you a better man now that you are loved, Astarian? Did they mend your ways? I rather think they did. Can't imagine anyone wanting to do that for you, though, dear. <laughs> so, how was your night with Gale? Did you have a long, hard debate? Oh, ignore him. Astarian envies the depth of our bond because he's of a shallower inclination. <laughs> Karlak. I know I say this every day, but I'm so glad you're here. Me too. And seeing you've got someone to care about now after ten bloody years, what would you say? Good for you, mate. Exactly so, your majesty. To bind oneself to another forever seems a fool's vow. In the gate especially, it's uncommon to marry your first love nowadays. Then by all means, call me a fool. So... What's it like caring for someone other than yourself, Minthara? You have never tried it, I assume. <laughs> Gods, no. It sounds like a lot of work. It takes less work than you devote to maintaining your foppish facade. And it's far more rewarding. So, Astarian, I hear your relationship has taken on a new aspect recently. My life has taken on a new aspect. It's only natural that my relationships change as well. I really didn't expect the affair to last between the two of you, Lazelle. Is it getting to be something more? We have spilled one another's blood. We have spent blows until utter exhaustion. Congratulations, I think. It's funny seeing you so smitten, Minthara. Didn't think you were able. I took my first lover before you were a spark in your father's eye, child. You have shared your new power with your lover, Astarian. I'm surprised. I expected you to turn your back once you got what you wanted. <laughs> Quite the opposite. I need someone I can trust. And now I know they'll never betray me. You fight harder than ever now that you have a lover to protect from harm, Lazelle. The Githyanki should encourage relations between their soldiers. <laughs> it is a proven tactic for morale. We need no boon for morale. I fight well when there is kin at my side. And now, I count one more among them. Astarian, I am astonished. To relish an intimacy again after such hardship is... a wound many never recover from. Are you charging for this sage advice, or is sticking your nose into my business just a hobby? Just all you will. I believe now in your honest heart. Halsin, you must have accumulated considerable wisdom on matters of the heart in your long life. Anything you'd like to pass on to a strapping love-struck wizard such as myself? <laughs> Dispensing advice on matters of the heart would be like swapping boots. What suits me may be a... Poor fit for you. Ah. Well, there's no faulting that logic. At least you didn't tell me to be myself. Oh, no, perish the thought. That can be outright cruel advice to offer in certain cases. 
I never was a sucker for a smooth talker. But I admit, Astarian, you're pretty slick. And you're rather the opposite of slick. Do you have a point? I was just being nice. Step one of starting a conversation, think before you speak. Never was my strong suit. Ah, fine, boo. Lazel, my hamster wishes me to tell you, you are the most beautiful thing he has ever seen. I'm afraid I can't return the sentiment, but I know of some Githyanki who would find him quite appealing. Mouth-watering, in fact. You consumed all this spawn in your service, Lord Astarian. You shall have to fend for yourself a while. Oh, I've never had trouble attracting foolish, pretty people. Nor did Cazador, it seems. Jahira! You think I'm pretty? Boo has been speaking to a certain squirrel friend who frequents our camp, Holson. He was turned from a red square to a grey, all by one shocking sight. Minsk thinks you owe him an apology. Apologize for partaking in one of nature's most solemn rites? <laughs> that squirrel should be glad to bear witness. No, Boo. I do not know what this has to do with the bears. Hey, so what's romance like in the Underdark, Minthara? Here on the surface, gender does not define one's role so strictly. There are weaklings of every sort. In Menzo Baranzan, romance is commonly a luxury enjoyed between women. Men are mostly present for propagation. I hardly saw you at the party. Did the honest and true blade sneak off for a little fun? No, nothing like that at all. <laughs> oh, but you protest too much. Now I know you are practicing your sword play. So, why night orchids? Well, isn't it enough that they're beautiful? It looks good on you. They remind me of some place. A place I can't quite remember. But I think I was happy there, wherever it was. <sighs> Sorry, I'm being silly. Indulge me, Lazel, as someone unfettered by Faerunian beauty standards. How would you appraise my appearance? Your beard looks like the hairy tufts upon the Sirlon, the largest of worm kind that slither our skies. Hmm. I suppose that's a bad thing? No, don't answer that. You'll never know unless you try. Just once. Maybe you'll like it. Do not think your twinkly-eyed wiles will work on us, vampire lord. Oh, I know I could never tempt you. But maybe your little friend would like to perch on a more elegant shoulder. Do not look into his eyes, boo. Think not of nesting in his thick and downy mane. Wild shaping must sprinkle some spice on your love life, Halcyn. <laughs> Indeed it does. Did you never experience such delights with Mistra? I, uh, hear the gods enjoy taking on the form of swans, horses, eagles, and the like when visiting with mortals. Oh, no, quite the opposite, actually. She mostly preferred our interactions to be abstract and incorporeal. Most invigorating. She was a high priestess of House Vandry. Beautiful, elegant, ruthless. I adored her, and had been sharing her bed for some time when the order came that she must die. Oh, no. I stayed with her while the poison did its work and whispered words of comfort as she slipped away. You and I may struggle to go unnoticed in such environs, Karlak. True enough. Hard to hide pretty under a bushel. <laughs> I meant more in terms of size. Folk of our stature can be a... Lure for drunkards seeking a brawl, I have found. Ooh, fun! You confound me, Will. You have all the illustrious iniquities of a warlock, and you choose to impress your partner with dancing. Well, I'm hardly going to say, oh, come here, have a hug in the arms of Hadar. So, Lazel, have you ever been tempted to use psionics in your, uh, romantic endeavors? 
only once. Did you know, in low gravity settings, Githyanki can maintain aerial suspension for hours at a time? Fascinating. I think the Archmage Tasha described a spell with similar effect. Really must look that up. You look happy, Shadowheart. Like a night orchid in bloom. You must be imagining it. It's all over your face. It must be all the fresh air since the crash. Has me flush. <laughs> You're cute. Halcyon, tell me about the man behind the hulking wall of muscle. Do you actually do anything besides meditate, counsel, fight, train, and make love? Is such an existence lacking? Hmm. Good question. You allowed that smith to meddle with your heart, Karlak, simply so you can be touched? Better to shut off the carnal desires than indulge them. They are distractions. Yes, because every function comes with a handy switch. Next time I'm injured, don't heal. Just turn me off and on again. Why have you not tried to lay with me, Astarian? I guess it shall have to remain a mystery, now and forevermore. It is in your nature to have tried. You have not. No, and you're so charming and alluring. It's baffling, really. Amorous passions usually make people more considerate, Minthara. Kinder, sympathetic, better at cooperating. They can also make people more protective, guarded, paranoid, and jealous. I've always felt flames to be a rather perfect expression of love, Karlak. Passionate, primal, capable of bestowing the most life-affirming comfort, or inflicting the profoundest damage. That's pretty nice. Never thought about it like that. But now I will. Something has changed about our friend, hasn't it? But I can't quite put my finger on it. This hungry look in their eyes, the haunted complexion. What could it mean? He's a vampire. I knew one of Rythwin's head masons. She was a good woman and strong as an ox. Really? <laughs> are, are, are strong women your type, Halsin? I don't discriminate against any type. Truly a bear man of the people. Your devilish patron is a delight, Will. Have you ever lain with her? I'm really not that kind of man. She will see her failure to seduce you as a stain on her honour. I know I would. I've been pondering something, Lazel. Why is it the Githyanki have belly buttons? Hmm? When they hatch from eggs? I did not grant you permission to gaze upon my midriff. I, I wasn't gazing. Merely observing. Though that can hardly be said for a certain someone else. So, how does love feel about romance? <laughs> Are you expected to bite your mate's head off afterwards? Be grateful I no longer follow the Spider Queen's teachings. If I did, you would be the first to fall into my web. I can't tell if you're joking. She is joking, right? Uh, just once. I'd like to find a village that hasn't been plundered and destroyed. Indeed. All the best weapons have already been scavenged. I was thinking about a warm fire and charming company, actually. I am perfectly charming, I'll have you know. On Kresh Kalir, I was known for my dazzling smile and charisma. You know, Karlak. There are other ways to express love beyond run-of-the-mill physicality. Uh, are you going to try and teach me about exceptional uses for a mage hand or what? Well, actually, I was thinking of poetry. Oops, sorry. But uh, now that I think of it, is mage hand especially hard to learn? Living without sunlight isn't so bad, Astarian. Where I came from, we would often work exclusively under cover of darkness. Yes, but you chose darkness. I was cast into it. The sun was banished from my life. Forbidden. And we all lust after the forbidden. Don't we? The fact one of your first dates is going to be one of your last. It's just not fair, Karlak. I don't want to think about that. 
I just want to enjoy whatever comes my way. You're worth more respect than every last rogue in this city. I hope you know that. Would you believe I've never been with a githyanki? If you cease your frivolous ways, keep your mouth closed, and learn to obey, perhaps we can attempt it. Oh, no. I think I will leave that honor to our esteemed friend. Half the men of Menzer Baranzen are pleasure servants, weaklings whose beauty is their only redeeming quality. You would fit right in with them, Astarian. You think I'm beautiful? <laughs> Menthara. <sighs> Even shaped by shadow as it is, Shah and architecture has a kind of beauty to it. Beautifully intimidating. This place was meant to scare people into submission. There you go. Cutting right through the ephemera to the heart of the matter. <laughs> Your finest quality, I think. And here I thought I rubbed you the wrong way. Nothing wrong with a bit of friction now and then. You help me keep my mind sharp. Oh, thanks, pal. I think. Your oldest sin, right, Halsin? You must have lots of good stories. <laughs> A few. But people always warm to the most salacious chapters. Oh, go on. They forget how much I study, meditate, and, as a bear, hibernate. <laughs> I must have spent a hundred years or more asleep. Ah, oh, sleep and adventure. Maybe I'll come back as a bear in some future life. Oh, what a delightfully secluded alley. I would have been in my element here once. But you consort with a better class of people now, right? A different class of person and a different type of consorting. Oh, let's just stop this conversation right here, shall we? Did Zariel know you'd be unable to touch anyone when she crammed that awful thing into your chest? Thing is, I can touch devils and the like back in Avernus. I never did, because I'm not a masochist. But I could have. Gods, I'm glad you got out of there. With my new best friend on my tail the whole time. Who knew? You say you have had many lovers, Astarian. If that is true, where are they now? They weren't lovers. Not in the way that you mean. They wanted me more than I wanted them. I used that to my advantage more times than I care to remember. Ah, the memories. The blushing mermaids where 15-year-old Will snuck his first kiss. <laughs> you didn't kiss anyone until you were 15. God, what a tragic sheltered life. Sheltered? Not at all. I was exposed to all manner of riot and revelry. Hells, my father even urged me on once or twice. But I've always been a bit old-fashioned on these matters. I find more pleasure in a courtly dance than a loveless fling. When we met, Shadowheart, your gaze seemed to linger in the distance on some unseen goal, some insubstantial purpose. I notice now your gaze settles on something or... Someone much closer. Is it that obvious? Of course. There's nothing escapes a wizard's powers of observation. Hey, Shaddy. Got a quick question about the best way to treat an infernal burn. Shaddy? Really? Uh, hearty? Shadsy? Or maybe just the fringe? <laughs> Shadow Heart will do just fine, thanks. Love is making you fanciful. You might be right. I gave my return to Baldur's Gate a lot of thought. I never pictured this, though. Oh, what did you have in mind? A quiet party? Toasting a return with a few good friends? Less quiet party with friends, more days of hedonistic debauchery. But uh, otherwise, yes. Mm, sounds like a recipe for disaster. But you know what? I'm learning to enjoy the taste of chaos. Count me in. Does your species release airborne pheromones upon beginning the courtship dance well? I've heard thus is the way with certain birds of paradise and prey. The chemical induces lowered inhibitions between the pair. No. I mean, I don't think so. Would you count a light spritz from a vial of jasmine dust as a pheromone? 
Indubitably. To have someone who cares about you and throw them away. I don't know how you do it. Any restriction, any tether must be shed. Surely you understand that. It's a form of freedom. If a tragic one. I've had enough tragedy in my day. You have too. But Shah's got you in a chokehold. It's called an embrace. I suppose you don't receive many. Whatever. You've quite the appetite, Halson. I'd wager you've bedded more of your foes than you've felled. Hmm. A challenging sum. The Chimera has three heads, but does it still count as one? Must have been a challenging kill. Kill? Yes. I've heard that in Baldur's Gate, wizard is also a term used for one who ensues their more <clears throat> carnal desires. Is that true, Will? Where are we going with this, Gale? Oh, nowhere. Just think it's a rather cruel misnomer. Not at all reflective of the glamour wizarding life affords. You are debating allowing another into your heart. A formidable woman like yourself does herself no favours in revealing herself to be so erratic, so uncertain. Quite the gossip, aren't you? Wouldn't have thought you cared. So, Gail, you laid with a goddess. You must have some sordid tales to tell. Sordid? I lay with the mother of magic herself. What we had was transcendent. Euphoric. Incandescent. Not sordid. You actually made sleeping with a goddess sound boring. <laughs> Incredible. It's good to see you smiling, Nazel. A momentary spasm of the jaw. But perhaps there is cause. Even in this dark hour, there are some things to take heart in. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. I think it's a true shame that your goddess doesn't allow for love. Do you regret it? I could never regret fulfilling my life's purpose. Besides, Lady Shah may afford me a little wiggle room. I am enjoying our walks together. Aren't you, Gail? Um, sure. In silence. I hear you are spotted being normal in the singing lute, Carlac. Are you feeling all right? Seem like the right thing to do. I've never really tried normal before. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day our champion of the hells has gone soft. Maybe I have. Finally. And how did you find the quiet life? Mm, it was nice. <laughs> it was really nice. Well... You are a man of great vigour. Why have you not sought a mate any of these nights we have camped? Ah, uh, well, I admit I've had thoughts about it. In my own way. Do not think well. Act. Shadowheart. Such a grim name for such a beautiful flower. Could you not stare so blatantly in my neck when you say that, please? I heard you mumbling that line to yourself earlier. It needs more work. Fortunate for his tongue, he didn't say it to me. Oh, but do keep calling her flower. She'll love that. Lazel, you've the most exquisite eyes, golden as the sands of the Kalim. And you've a soft skull. A gay tentacle will have no issues pushing through it. Is that a compliment? No, it is a fact. Life in this Faerun is laughably weak. When you've loved a goddess, as I have, people often think you less experienced in the ways of romance. She just lives on another plane. <laughs> Only jesting. I'm in no position to judge, especially after what happened with Shah. It's true. For a time, I neglected the physical in favour of celestial euphoria. But our relationship was no less real for it. A dinner date. At first your request confused me, but then I became curious. Think you might like to try it for yourself sometime? It sounds terribly understimulating. Depends on the company. Well, good thing for us both I make for riveting company. 
I'm probably more at home in the water than you now, Astarian. <laughs> probably. Although I am 200 years out of practice, running water is no place for vampires. But uh, perhaps I'll join you for a dip. Once everything is done, then we could see who's best. I've never met anyone like you, Lazel. Yes, I've been told I'm quite scintillating. Have you really? No. Mm. Lazel, do you believe in love at first sight? I hardly believe in love at all. Oh. But I do believe in carnal pleasure. Oh. I fear I've been rather hasty to judge you, Starion. One heartbreak was quite enough for me. But to experience it as many times as you have it must change a person. Thank you, Gail. But let us both hope that broken hearts are a thing of the past. Couldn't find you for a while at the party. Was hoping we could regale our friends with a nice three-horn duet. Ah, I just needed a moment of quiet to think, that's all. What about? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Well, yeah. One thing I'll say for the Hells, the gossip is excellent. Faerun's a funeral parlour by comparison. Ah, this place never changes. Perhaps it should. All I see are carousing fools. I know. Isn't it wonderful? Endless opportunities for mischief. The more I learn of this plain, Astarian, the more I believe love is its greatest disease. Oh, I don't know. The screaming fever is pretty bad. Ah, Shadowheart. How blessed I am to be so near. I heard you with Lazel. Don't think I'll play second fiddle to the likes of her. Go try your charms on someone who's out of earshot. I can't quite believe you've been a pickup artist all these years, Astarian. Well, if the doublet fits. Most of the things you say still sound like you're in a two-copper paperback, read by little girls. I sound like a charming rake, you mean? The hero everyone fawns over. I hope my home can be yours, if you don't go back to the skies. Chuck. I have no intention of allowing myself to grow a third stomach and a withered arm in a ducal seat. I meant the gate. But you're always welcome for tea.